First, write your name and class and then set your paper off to the side. For the background, we're going to be using tempera paint. Your teacher will squirt some tempera paint on some kind of a surface for you to roll it onto the background. We are going to be using orange and yellow so that we have a little bit of color variation in our pattern. If you use just one or the other color, that's totally fine as well. We are going to be using a special tool called a brayer. This is a print making tool. It's basically a rubber paint roller. Use the brayer to roll through your colors. We want them to be a little blended. Next, you're going to be putting the paint onto your printing plate. For this printing plate, we have bubble wrap that I've taped to a piece of cardboard. Just roll your paint onto the bubble wrap. Be careful not to press too hard because we don't want to pop all of the bubbles. That would defeat our purpose. We're trying to create a nice even layer of paint so that we can have an even print when we're all done. When you're happy with your coverage, you're going to press your paper on top of the plate. Make sure that your name is facing up. This will allow your image to press onto what is the front of the paper. Gently rub the back of your paper to help the paint transfer from your printing plate onto the paper. Next, you're going to slowly peel your paper away and you have your print. We're going to put that over on the dry rack to dry. To make your stamp, you're going to need a piece of printing foam, a Sharpie, and a pencil. Begin by writing your name and class on the back of your foam. When you're choosing a pencil, make sure it's a pencil that's not too sharp. If it's too sharp, it's going to poke right through the foam. We're going to start by making a teardrop shape. Go up, around, and back down to the bottom. We're not going to worry about wings. We will add those on later. Next, create a slightly curved line for the head. And then we're going to add some stripes. When you're drawing, press hard into the foam, but not so hard that you're scraping foam away or poking holes. Go nice and slow. Next, we're going to color in a couple areas with our pencil. This might take a little while. The harder you press, the further it will indent. This will give us a little bit of color variation. Since we're printing onto yellow paper, we want some of the yellow paper to show through when we're using our black ink. By pressing down the foam, that will be a spot that will remain yellow. When you're done coloring the head, skip over the first stripe, and then color in an AB pattern for the rest of the body. Your stamp should look similar to this when you're done. Now that our stamp is complete, it's time to do a print. We're going to start by writing our name and class on the back of our yellow piece of paper. You can set that off to the side while you get your stamp ready. For this, we're going to be using printing ink. Printing ink is basically a paint that's a little thicker and sticky. And then again, we'll be also using our brayer. Your teacher will put some ink onto the surface for you to roll the brayer through. When you're rolling your brayer, you want to go in one motion, go forward, pick it up, bring it back, forward, pick it up, bring it back. You want to try to get ink all over your brayer. Don't just roll back and forth because the ink isn't going to distribute all over the roller. Next, you're going to put your stamp on top of something to protect the table, and we're just going to roll the ink onto the stamp. Go nice and slow and make sure it's 
fully covered. It's okay if you have a little bit of white around the outer edge as long as your entire stamp is covered. Next, we're going to leave our name up and we're going to press our paper down onto the stamp. Rub the back gently, but make sure not to scoot the stamp around. If you accidentally scoot your stamp, it's going to be a little bit blurry when you pick up your paper. Once everything is rolled, pick it up and you'll have your print. You're going to put it over on the dry rack to dry completely. For the wings, we'll be using some bleeding tissue paper, some water, and some paper. Start by writing your name in class. With a Sharpie or a pencil first, you're going to make your wings. You want to draw four teardrop shapes. I'm only doing two in this example. After you have your teardrops drawn, your teacher will give you some bleeding tissue paper. You're going to crumple it up, put it on top of your paper, and then spritz it lightly with a water bottle. You don't want to completely soak it, just enough to get it wet to make the tissue paper stick. It's going to leave a really cool pattern on your paper when the tissue paper dries. After you spray it, your teacher will tell you where to put it. You can press a couple parts of the tissue paper down if you notice it's not really coming into contact with the paper. Be careful though, it will dye your fingers blue. Now that we're finally done printing all of the pieces for this project, it's time to put it together. You're going to start by tracing an octagon in the middle of your paper. Just use a pencil to go around the sides. Once that's complete, you're going to cut it out. Next, we're going to cut out our B, our wings, and some legs. For the B, you're going to bubble cut around the outside of the line. You can see the yellow line that outlines the shape of our B. I left just a little tiny outline around that so that my B is outlined in black. Go nice and slow and try to keep your lines as even as you can. Next, cut out your four wings. After your wings are cut out, you can go ahead and glue them onto the side of your bee. Next, we're going to cut out six legs. I folded my paper in half so that I could draw three sets. After you have six legs cut, glue them onto your B. You can even add a little stinger on the bottom if you want. The last few touches will involve some googly eyes and a pipe cleaner for antennas. Your teacher will use some hot glue to help you glue on googly eyes. For the antenna, use the pipe cleaner and bend it in half. Then you can use something to help you roll the ends. You could just use your fingers if you want, or you could bend them around a marker. Your teacher can help you hot glue them on. Your final step is to glue your bee onto your honeycomb. You can decide how you would like to make the placement. Make sure you add plenty of glue to the back so that it really sticks. Make sure to sign your name on the bottom of your honeycomb and you're all done.